Chapter 47. For the director of music of the Sons of Korah, a psalm. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. Selah. Wow. This is joyous. This is praiseful, praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Just amen. Listen to how I start off. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. And then he goes on to recognize, <clears throat> even then, even during that time, even during the Old Testament, from the Exodus to the Promised Land, he's recognizing that the Lord subdued the nations under them and put those uh, nations under us, people under our feet. Uh, he chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. Because the Lord chose Israel at that time for, the, that that's what was his people. He knew that the these people were uh, a group a group that was um, from the line of Jacob, <laughs> you know, and that they would they were worshippers of the Lord. They were worshippers of the Lord, um, and the people who were in the Promised Land area, the Canaanite area, were people who had made a choice that they knew about the Lord, but they didn't want to worship the Lord. They didn't. They were doing all kinds of things continually. Um, and so the Lord removed them, removed them, and it was uh, and provided for Israel, even though Israel wasn't perfect. <laughs> by all means and he and the lord says it it was you it wasn't that this wasn't done by your righteousness but by the promise by the covenant <clears throat> that the lord had already made and so they're recognizing that the their inheritance was from the lord and that's and their dwelling place is from the lord and so let's talk about it from past to present we talked about something similar to this before about forcing things about control um it's kind of a recurring theme right here in today's bible study about control um today we can try to do things we can try to force things what it may be whatever it may be forcing a relationship forcing a job forcing uh, some type of economy, forcing some type of something in our lives, expand it, expand upon it about forcing, not just waiting for the Lord, but forcing something, forcing a family, forcing uh, thoughts and things over other people, forcing authority, forcing all kinds of just that, that action or that type of thing called forcement, forcing enforcement. <clears throat> it's a control that we have that we, as humans, sometimes you think we need to utilize in order to reel something back in, control it, or put it to where we want it to be, or put it in priority for our perspective. And so what we want to do is not force things because when we force things, it's not going to be right. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be what we may think is even a blessing because we're doing it and we're forcing things. Give you an example. Many, uh, Saul, the first king of Israel, he was someone who was anointed and was a wonderful leader spiritually, but he wanted to do things how he wanted to do things. He didn't want to always seek the Lord first. He wanted to see the situation at hand and see what he could do 
in order to conquer, in order to resolve, in order to do whatever it may be, including relationships, right? And so we have examples throughout the Bible, but that was one that just came up immediately. <laughs> we have times where we want to control things and we have to understand that forcing things, doing, doing that forcing and going outside of what God's timing, the Lord's timing, creates disasters, you, we may look, oh, it may resolve the, we may think it resolves the issue. We it may bring temporary relief, but it's temporary. It is not everlasting. It is completely different from when the Lord provides. Because when the Lord provides, it's overflowing. It's more, it's better than we could ever imagine and think of. And it's more than we ever would need. And so think about those things. And how, one, one good, one good thing to think about is when something was resolved or when that good thing came, did you force it? Force it. How you may know is you may be the only one that benefited from it. I mean, not to say that it was personal, but in, in some cases it may be like, such as internal healing or something, but it may be one of those things where it was, it was temporary and it was like, you know, like shallow, like it was. And when the Lord provides the blessing are about, they, I mean, it is huge. It is huge. And you, you know, the difference or you will know the difference <laughs> if you have yet to experience, but, um, pray, give it to the Lord, relinquish that control, relinquish it because the Lord knows and the Lord will provide for us. Um, reading over this, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? What does it make you think? 